Hi, my name is Chemeke Rize. I'm a third year medical student, and I am here to tell you to subscribe to Sir Majesty Easy World, or science is fun. Okay, Charles Darwin's theory of organic evolution is the most popular one that I've pulled, that I've challenged greatly the idea of spatial periation up to today. Okay, Charles Darwin, you can go and read his history, wanted uh, at, at a stage even being a, a priest in the Catholic Church, but there is something that led to something. But before, his history and his life is none of my business here. I'm here to give you his theories and to help you use them to answer questions correctly during examinations. Now, Charles Darwin's theory of organic evolution, summarily, I'll summarize. I'll give you the summary. You can see that on the screen, but I will produce it the way you will even understand it. Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, known as Darwinism, states that present day species of plants and animals, that's recent day species of plants and animals, arise or came from simpler ancestral type by the process of natural selection process of natural selection acting on the variations found within a population i take it again darwin's theory of organic evolution states that present day species of plants and animals arise from simpler ancestral type by the process of natural selection acting on the variability found within a population. So, to pick this, once you mark a term here, present day species coming from ancestral type, that is speciation, that an existing species will give rise to a new species, not that God created every species, differently. Then, you should mark natural selection. So, Darwin's theory of organic evolution is based on natural selection. But, Lamarck's theory was based on use and disuse, acquired traits in hairy tanks. But, this man used natural selection. This theory was propounded around 1858. Yes. Now, for you to understand Darwin's theory of organic evolution, you need to understand natural selection. Simple. So the theory of natural selection was collectively propounded not only by Charles Darwin, take note for exam, was collectively propounded by Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace. These two people, Wallace and Darwin. But Darwin went there before Wallace. And that's why Darwin is everywhere. So this theory was not only made by Darwin, it was made by Darwin and Wallace. Just in case, in exam, they ask you, theory of natural selection was propounded by, uh, commonly you'll be looking at Charles Darwin. But if they pay them, the answer should be Wallace and Darwin. Okay? Though, Darwin's went there before. Now, let me explain theory of natural selection, which will enable you to understand what Darwin is trying to say. But well, remember, my own weakness I discovered from Darwin's theory is that he never tried to explain how life came. He explained how varieties of life existed. I don't know what understand what I'm saying. That present day species evolved from simpler ancestral type. Who made this simpler ancestral type is a question. But academically, the limitation to Darwin's theory, traditional Darwin's theory, is the origin and source of variation. I just told you the one I discovered as his limitation. But for exams, limitation to Darwin's theory, traditional Darwin's theory, is that he, he noted that organisms show variation without knowing the cause of variation between organisms of the same species. Now, natural selection is trying to tell us that every organism tends to over-reproduce, but is being naturally checkmated to remain constant by other natural means. See what I mean? Every organism, every population, tend to overproduce more than the environment can sustain. Then such phenomena such as disease, competition, famine, try to keep the population of each species fairly constant. So, 
in natural selection, what will you notice? Overreproduction. Overreproduction. Then these overreproduced individuals show variation. That is, they vary. We are all humans, but I am different from you that is watching. You are different from me that is teaching you. Our appearance are not the same. It is only the identical twins that seem to be the same. So it was Charles Darwin that first noted and uh, 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 eventually detected the impact of this variation. He said that organisms overproduce. The overproduced organisms show variation. That is, they vary, which is true. We are not the same thing, but we overproduce. Then, these organisms that show variation are subjected to competition. Naturally, when there is overreproduction, competition must exist. In your family, if you are the only child, you know what I mean? If there is a, 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 if there is a meat there in the pot, you don't care because you are the only person. But when you are up to three, four, five, if you don't go and eat your own, your younger or your elder brothers or sisters will take it for you. So it means that when we have more population, if we have overproduction, definitely competition will be more fierce. Why? Because you use the word overpopulation when you try to surpass or surpass or exceed your resources, which is what happens. Remember, it's only human beings that use family planning. We are talking about natural humans. Family planning is not natural. These are artificial. But let's take a look at other species apart from human. They keep reproducing. They don't care the number. But the environment tries to keep them fairly constant. Through these things, competition, disease, famine, natural disasters, so, and this overproduced individual show variation. Hi, my name is Cheryl. And I'm Jennifer. Guess, Guess what? what? There's a channel called Star Majesty Easy World Science. And you know the best part? Mm -hmm. It makes science so easy. Wow. It makes science easy, simplified, and very, very fun. Guess what? Rocky Science ain't Rocky Science anymore. It's now ABC. Like if you did science in your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing about Star Majesty World Science Channel is that he makes available laboratory equipment and reagents. Guess the best part if chemistry has been hard for you, he does tutorials. And another thing is when you order for these things, they are high quality and they are also cheap and affordable. And if you want to order, just look at the number below the screen. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification button down below. Don't forget to share, of course, obviously, there's love in sharing. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you there. <laughs> In the natural selection, I take it again, over reproduction, over reproducing individuals show variation, then thirdly there will be competition, struggle for existence, struggle for existence. Then in that struggle for existence, what leads to that? There will be limited supply of mutually needed resources, and that will lead to competition. Then when competition comes in, it divides the same population into many groups, mainly two, let's take it two at the end, the weakest and the fittest. Since these organisms that are overproduced, they are of the same species but they vary in appearance and in some features. Some will survive, some will not withstand a competition, maybe due to the way they are made natural. Remember, it's not a species killing a species, no, that's not natural selection, it's just the natural favoring some group in a population more than another group in the same population. That is natural selection, not a species killing another species. For example, if they say that if you are black, you can be found, it means that the blacks will be eliminated from existence and the whites will survive and thrive. But let's turn it around and say there will be harsh weather everywhere, no more shelter, and the weather will be very, very hot, sunlight intensity will be high. The whites that have low melanin will be eliminated and the blacks will be selected. It is not you that is saying this, it is the nature. So when there is struggle for existence, there will be survival of the fittest. Who is the fittest here? The most adapted. The most adapted. Those of them that have high survival values among them in the population will survive. So then the weakest are those that are not adapted well to the environment. They are the weakest. Please take note here. Strongest, fittest, weakest here do not mean physical strength. If not, dinosaurs would overleave us today because I'm sure they are more gigantic, they are more strong, powerful 
in terms of strength and in terms of size, but they are no more. They are weaker to compare to us in the world today. So the fittest means the most adapted. The fittest means the most adapted. So I'll take it over again in summary way. Natural selection holds that organisms overreproduce and overreproduced organisms show variation. And due to overreproduction, there will be competition. And the competition will favor those with the most suitable adaptive features and will now not favor those with less survival values. And those ones with less survival values is due to their own natural way they are. Nobody made them that way. I've given you many instances that shows weaker, stronger. If they say that the land is now weak and no longer strong enough to hold anybody that is above 80 kg, and when this thing is happening, you are already 80 kg, the other person is already 60 kg, we found out that any other person that is 80 kg will no longer be in existence, and those with 60 kg and 80 below will survive. They are now the fittest in that uh, context. Okay? So I believe you understood what I mean by the theory of natural selection. It ends in survival of the fittest. So, in exam, they might tell you whose theory supports the idea that organisms with the most adapted feature will survive and thrive in the world today. The answer is Charles Darwin and Wallace's uh, theory of natural selection. Now, Darwin's theory has a limitation, which, which, which is what I told you earlier, that the limitation is that he couldn't explain why these organisms show variation, why they are of the same species. This was answered when the knowledge of genetics came into existence, and genetics was created by Gregor Mendel around 1866, if I'm right, and this now gave open why classical genetics which now explain how come about variation. There are things we call mutation. Now, we start learning more about how genes combine, how organisms, how characters are expressed. So when you combine the knowledge of classical genetics with traditional down Okay, the neo Darwinism I told you, is combination of the knowledge of classical genetics with traditional Darwin, and that explains the source of that variation. Now, Having seen this uh, theory, and I've also told you the limitations and the weaknesses, it is also good to know that he got his inspirations mostly from Galapagos, Ireland, where he was engaged in a, a journey, a long time travel through the sea known as HMS Big, Her Majesty's uh, ship. Then he participated in this and uh, he, he fell into, uh, he, he came across some creatures in the Galapagos Island, and he met birds today called Darwin's finch, or uh, uh, Galapagos finch. He picked them, he discovered that the closer these organisms live, the more similar they are. He collected these birds at, different, at, at the different parts of the island, and discovered that they differ in their beak. Some have beak, that's the bill, modified for as a woodpecker, we have the insectivorous one, those that feed on nectar. So, but they resemble one large ground finch. So what might have caused this? Why is it that the closer organisms live, the similar they look? He collected these samples and kept them, but due to the fear of what is raining, he couldn't publish anything officially to tell people that God did not create every species separately. Then Wallace started his journey and also arrived at the same thing. But this time around, he, wore, he I think he studied butterfly, the Austrian marsupia very well. He was also a collector just like Charles Darwin. He was also afraid, but he wrote to Charles Darwin because he has read book published by Darwin. And that's, he wrote exactly what Darwin had in mind. And this is how Darwin invited him. They now team together. Now, great minds think alike. Two good heads are better than one. They are now serving as they encouraged one another and they stand before the linear society and presented this theory of natural selection in the year 1858. Then Darwin published a book, of course, known as On the Origin of Species. So for you to understand more about what I'm saying, in the, in the ground state of what Darwin really means, you can go and read that book, On the Origin of the Species. Then years later, Alfred Rossi Wallace also published another book that explained evolution in detail based on natural selection 
the book is called Downism. So Downism was written by Alfred Russell Wallace, not by Charles Darwin, as you may think. But the book published by Charles Darwin in 1859 should be on the origin of species. There, he explained all this I've been saying. I love you. Thank you for watching.